Hey, what is going on everyone? In today's video, we're going to create this workout rounds application. And basically this application was born because I was working out and I couldn't time myself and I don't have a single down in my basement where I'm working out. So I thought, let's just create an application. Okay, so let me really quickly show you how the application works. Basically we have this UI where we can input our minutes, our round minutes and our rest minutes because between each round, we're going to have a rest time. Now there are three rounds programmed into this application. If you wish to implement more or less than, then please feel free to do so. Also, we have the time, the current time displayed here. Yes, it's 6.18 a.m. You're seeing it correctly because I have a lot, a lot of stuff to do today. So I thought let's get up real early and start recording. Okay, also when we're going to start the time, we, we're going to have increase the sound of it, we're going to have sound effects. <laughs> well, sound effects, we're going to have a ding when the round starts, we're going to have a horn when the round ends, and when we have 10 seconds left, exactly like in, <laughs> in any kind of box match or in UFC, you're going to hear those cluck cluck, those... Um, what are they called? Well, nevertheless, the wood sticks and they slap them against each other. So if you ever saw boxing or UFC or any kind of competition, when there's 10 seconds left, you're going to hear the clap. And I actually record that with this microphone using two wooden sticks. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me show you how this actually works. We're going to, I usually would say three rounds, uh, three minutes for a round and one minute for rest. But this is going to take far too long, so I'm going to um, give it a fraction. So 0 0.3, actually 0 0.2, will be 20% of a minute. And also for the rest time, 20% So we're going to go over this more quickly. Okay, so we implement, we inputted our time. Now if we click on the start button, a countdown timer will start which will show us the time. So we're going to have 10 seconds and after 10 seconds, the round is going to start. Also listen for the cluck cluck because it's going to signal to us that there are 10 seconds left. Okay, so let's click on start and let me quickly show you how this works. And then we're also going to stop this. So after I click on start, hopefully you hear that. So the countdown starts and we can also stop it. Okay, if I click on stop, then the countdown stops. Now I hope you can hear the clicking sounds. Let me just check the level. Oh, we, we also have we also have verification, of course. If uh, there's nothing inputted, then it cannot start. So we're going to implement to uh, twenty percent of a minute, twenty percent of a minute. It starts. Let me see if this works. Okay, you can hear it. Uh, let's we really go for it. Go for the motions. Five, four, three, two, one. There's the bell and there's the first round. Now, when this starts and also, ah, this is too quick. Uh, when it starts, we're going to replace that heart icon with a fist icon. Round one will appear and a timer will appear. And as you can see, each time there are 10 seconds left, they're clack, clack. You're going to hear that. We're not going to talk real fast. We're going to hear the clack, clack and the rest time will start. And when the 10 seconds in the rest time, and the rest time ends, you're going to hear the bell again, then 10 seconds, clack, clack. And when the round ends, you're going to hear the horn. So three, two, one, and horn. Okay. And this is going to repeat itself uh, three times. So this is the last rest time. And after this, we're having our last round. And when the round ends, 10 seconds left. Ooh, come on. I was going to show you a bit of, of my workout. And that's it. So everything ended and we can, we're going to click again if we want to start in our round. So this is the project. Hope you will enjoy it. Hope it's going to be helpful for you. We're going to use a lot of functional programming. And yeah, if you like my videos, subscribe to the channel share this video with others and hit that thumbs up buttons button. Also, if you have any kind of questions or requests for future projects, please leave them in the comment section below. It also helps out with the algorithm. So please comment on my videos. So once again, like subscribe.
enjoy the project. So let's get into it. Okay, so I just created the empty folder. You can call it whatever you want. I'll call the workout rounds timer. Hey, if you find a better <laughs> name for this application, please do so because workout rounds timer, it actually does that, but I find the title a bit dumb. So let's get started by creating an index.html file, a style.css file, and a app.js file, app.js. Okay, I don't need you. Okay, let's start with the boilerplate. So shift exclamation mark. It's going to start us up with the boilerplate. Let's give this a name of workout runs timer. And down here in the body, actually we need to include a couple of things. So let's include our, let's link up our style, style.css. We are also going to include font awesome. So I'm just going to copy the CDN. You can go to Google, search for font awesome CDN and also copy that one in. So this is the font awesome CDN served over Cloudflare. Ah, uh, sorry, no, that's the material CSS. Ah, I'm going to show you that very quickly. So we're going to go to much styling the input tags, uh, actually not all of the style and a bit of a button styling and also I'm going to use the materials default. So go to materials.com and copy this link right here. Boom. All set up. Don't need you then. So let's very really quickly start it. This is our finished project. Let's hit click, right click, open with live server. We're going to start up our project. There's nothing in there. So let's quickly create our icon tag also verify if font awesome is in there so icon just going to use i then dot for class f a s f dot f a dot heartbeat dash actually it's heartbeat okay and this should give me a heart there's there it is a little heart okay let's down here also include our script so if you don't forget it app dot js and now we can start up by immediately going into css and we're going to call i'm going to create a class which is very important for me which is going to be applied more than one time so it's going to be a utility class let's type in a comment classes this is going to be a flex class. So I'm going to type in here dot flex and each time this class is applied to whatever it, it is applied is going to be displayed as flex. We're going to have the flex direction as column. We're going to have the content justified as center. So justify content center and align items to the center. So this is actually just a basic setting for each and every for each time you're going to display flex. If you want to display it in a row, we're going to show you that later on, then we're going to use something else. So I did this because our, right from the get go, I want to give the, the body, the class of flex. Okay, so as you can see, the heart moved to the center of the page, or to the center top. Now next up, let's take care of our body tag itself. And each time I'm going to type something into our body, should I leave this up here? Uh, utility classes, yeah. Let's grab onto the body. Let's give it a height of 100, 100 viewport heights. So always when I create an application, it's going to take out the entire height of the, sorry about that, of the, dis, of the view display, of the display. So 100 viewport height, we're going to set the margins auto, so whatever in there is going to be centered but also the justify content and align items to the center helps with this because now everything is in the center of the page each time we type something into our body we're going to use a white color so e e e this is not completely white but it's it's um well it's f f f f <laughs> let's just say that okay now let's use a text shadow so each time i type something each text will automatically have a text shadow. So four pixels, four pixels, five pixels, 
and a hash free 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 which is just a dark color okay and you can already see that the heart has a bit of a shadow now i also need the background color and for this up here before my utility classes i'm going to call upon the root the root selector and within here i'm going to create a couple of variables and yes css also has variables so let's start by giving them a name if the way you create a variable is within the root selector you're going to start with a dash dash then the name of the variable this just signifies that it is a variable okay you going to get this bg c so background color and this is going to be background color number one which is going to be hash i484 c67 it's going to be our first column. I'm going to, going to copy this a couple of times. This is going to be G2. And the hexadecimal color uh, number for this is 373394. Then next up, we're going to have an orange color. So let's just call it orange. And this is going to replace the orange color with hash E9885. Oh, okay. Next up, we're going to have a red color. I think I'm going to copy this red a couple of times. So red color. Let's go with a E two four three seven nine. Man, I hate typing in the hexadecimal colors. So I'm going to copy this a couple of times. Next up is blue color. You know what? I'm just going to copy them all in. So we have a blue color with the hexadecimal number of 01567D, then a blue light color, which is lighter than this one, <laughs> uh, which will have a hexadecimal number of 0287C5, and a green color, which will have a hexadecimal number of 44DE00. Okay, so now that we get our lateral numbers, out of the way let's also set the body's background color so background color i'm going to set it to the now let's use a variable i'm going to use it like bar open and close parenthesis dash dash bg and dash c dash one hit save and there we go there's a background color now of course if you replace this with any other color from the variables or for with whatever other color you wish now we're going to also position our body relative because we need to position a couple of things and absolutely all, actually all only the the eye contact will be positioned absolute within our body and for this we need to position our body relative okay we got this out of the way now to, 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 let's go back to our html yes we're going to close this just need these three tabs i'm going to tap through them on the way so let's go back to our html and let's start creating one big container that's going to contain anything, everything. Now, accepting this icon tag, everything is going to be passed into a container. So dot for general div to be created dot and I'm going to give this the title of workout dash timer dash container and also dot flex. So again, I'm going to use my flex class. And there we go. Now, everything that we're going to create is going to live within this container, excepting our audio files. Now, for our audio files, should I already include them? No, we don't need them right now, so I'm not going to do this. But let's uh, move on with our container. So, within our container, we're first of all going to create a header tag. This header tag will also have the class of flex. So, as I said, we're going to use this flex class a lot. Hit enter, and within our header tag, we're going to have our h1 with a class of title and it's going to say workout timer uh, sorry workout rounds timer and hit enter and there's our h1 now right after our h1 we're going to create another container a generic container so dot inputs dash container Within this container is where all of our input step will live. So this two inputs and also this button right here. Now we're also going to have labels and you can see they're grouped together. So for each, let me put this here. 
What? What is this? Let's say rounds container. There we go. So within our inputs container. Oh, by the way, I'm using Emmet a lot. So as you saw, I'm using dot, then open close query braces. This just means, uh, as I did right here, that it's going to include the text within the tags. And if you want to learn more about Emmet, I have an ex I have a complete VS Code class uh, on Udemy. So if you wish to try that out, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Okay, so our inputs container. Within our inputs container, let's now create containers, as I said, for each label and input. So I'm going to start again with a class of inputs of input group. So we're going to start out with a class of input group. And this is also going to have, again, the class of flex. Now within our input group, we're going to have a label. The label, the first label is going to have, hmm, let's just say, it's going to have the class of round timer. Actually, just okay. Now within here, we're going to create a label. So label tag, which is going to have a class of round time because this is going to be for a round time and also going to display the text of round length hit enter and underneath we don't need this for underneath our label we're going to have a input tag so create the input tag with a type of number it's going to have the ID of round time, so the same ID as it has a class as the, the as the labels class so round time, and we're going to create then a place. We don't need a name; we just need at the end of it a placeholder with minutes, so the user knows what to input. Okay, so there we go. Now, if we to get rid of this these arrows, it's pretty simple. You don't need to do this, but I hate those arrows. So I'm always going to get rid of them. And there are different settings for Chrome and Firefox and also Edge and Safari. So I'm going, just going to copy this in and paste it in here. So basically we're going to, these are the settings for Chrome, oops. Chrome, Safari, Edge, and Opera. So input, we're going to use the WebKit selector. And we're going to uh, set the appearance as none and margin zero. And also for Firefox, for the type of number, we're going to replace the Mozilla appearance text field. And you can see it's gone. Okay, so let's create another input tag. Let's go back to our HTML file. Let's copy this input group, just going to copy it down here, and we're going to replace the round with rest. So select it three times, control D, and rest time. And there should be capital R, and there we go. Now the last thing that we need, so after this two group classes, but still within our input container, we're going to need a button. So let's create a button. Let's give it a class of PTN, and this is automatically going to use the class form, the class uh, type from Material CSS. And I'm also going to give this the ID of start because I'm going to grab onto this using CSS. And let's hit save. And within here is also going to be a, let's just type in here the text of start. Within here, we're also going to create the click function in order to start the, well, to start the function. <laughs> okay, now after our container, right after our inputs container, we're going to create a H4, and it's just going to have the text of set the duration of rounds, of your rounds, of your rounds. 
you know, set the duration of my rounds because I'm over here and you're over there. And rest time. Boom, enter. There we go. You can now go to our CSS and style it a bit. So let's do this by creating actually two more things. Right after our H4, we're going to have two H2s. So H2 times two. The first H2 is going to have the ID of start countdown. And the second H2, let me just copy this. It's going to have the idea of display time. And within this display time is where our, well, our displayed time is going to live. Within the start, count, start countdown is where this part is going to live. So let's start the countdown. This right here, okay? Let me stop it. Let's go to back to our project and let's start styling this part. Okay, first things first, let's go down here where I have our input and let's start styling our workout timer container. So dot, I'm going to select the class of workout dash timer dash container. I'm going to give this a width of 600 pixels. So it's not going to be larger than 600 pixels. Now let's grab onto the title class. And we're going to give this a font size. So let's increase the font size to 6 rem. Let's align the text to the center by using text align center. Okay, so we're basically styling our title up here. Because our h1 had the class of title. And let's also set the margin top and bottom to 15 viewport heights and left and right to zero. As soon as I do this, I'm going to push this down, this up, and so far and so on. Okay, now also I'm going to give the H4 a text aligned to the center. So this is also going to be aligned in the center of the page. Now let's grab onto our input container here. And this input container class is actually a utility class. I'm going to put it up here in our utility classes, so class input container, uh, inputs, sorry about that, inputs container. And I'm going to display this as flex again, and after we hit save, you will see that our container now flexing in the row direction. Okay, now let's also justify the content to the center. We're going to give it a width of 100%. Scroll down here a bit. I'm going to change the background color. And now I'm going to use a variable, a variable again. You can just hit dash dash and all, and all your variables will appear, okay? Now I'm going to use a background two. Background color two for this inputs container. What is going on? Hey, I didn't finish. <laughs> I mistyped this. Sorry about that. It's going to end with an E. Hit save and there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, now let's go to a back our background inputs container. Let's go back to our inputs container. And let's also give it a padding of one RAM. Hit save. Let's give it a border radius of five pixels. A box shadow of 0, 50 pixel, 15 pixels, 10 pixels, and a hash free, free, free. For the color, let's hit save a, a bit. And uh, I'm also going to give this a hover effect. So when I hover over it, over this container, let's go up here and let's say hover. When I'm hovering over this container, I'm going to change the box shadow to a 0, 10 pixels, 5 pixels, and hash free, free, free again, but not XP pixels. So when we hover with it, it's going to change, it's just going to have a bit of, um, just going to have a bit of an effect, 
but I also want to include a transition. So let's do here transition. I'm going to use all 0.2 seconds ease. And the exactly the same transition we also need when we're hovering out. So I'm going to include this in the generic container. Okay, so as you can see, it now has the transition effect for both hover in and hover out. So, yeah, boom. Okay, let's move on by grabbing onto our input group. So I'm going to go underneath our H4, so class of input dash group. I'm going to give this a padding of one RAM and already here. I think I need to grab onto the place where so we're going to do this a bit later on. Okay, now let's grab onto the label and we're going to grab onto the label with the class of round time only. Round, forgetting an end there. So round time, I'm going to increase its font size to 1.1 RAM. And we're also going to change the color to a variable color of red. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing to the rest time. So I'm going to copy that. Let's replace this with rest time and you will be blue light. Should have named it light blue. Hmm. Okay, next up, let's take care of our inputs. Now we're going to select the general input tag so all of our input tags, and we're going to give them a color of orange. So variable orange. Let's increase the font size to to rem. Now let's. Oh yeah. Uh, one quick thing: when you're using a a CSS framework like Materialize, it will always try to overwrite, or it already has some sort of all right it already has a built-in style to it so if you wish to overwrite its style you need to use important okay so if i do this you can see the font size now increased so whatever you wish to over if something doesn't work it's mostly because it has the important tag in it okay now let's increase this max width to 120 pixels and then align the text to the center. So whatever we type in there, it's going to be in the center of the page. Okay, now let me also change the input placeholder. And I want to give this a placeholder shown. I want to give this a gray color. So let's just go with the color of hash 999. And there should be enough. Now let's change the the color of our round input because we have it now set to orange. This is just the general setting, but I'm going to select now the input tag, which has the ID of round time. As you can remember, we give our input tags IDs and we're going to change the color to a red color. So it's going to have the same color as the label. Now we're going to do the same thing for rest time. So rest time. And this will have the same color as the rest time label has. I'm going to replace this. So we type something in here. It's going to be blue. Now, also when I'm hovering over them, I want them to have a bit of an effect. Now, this effect right here, this underline of the input tag, is handled by material CSS. But I also want to give them the user the effect that we're over a specific input field. I'm going to do this by let's do each of them on um, on the each of the on the each of the input tags. So let's do input tag with the ID of time. When we hover over it, I'm going to select the border button. This is the bottom border there, and I'm going to give it a one pixel solid and the color of red It's going to have the same color as uh, the input label and input tag has. Okay, so when I hover with it, it will signify the user, okay, you're over this input tag. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just copy, yeah, let's copy this. Let's replace this with the rest time. 
and we're going to replace also, oops, have a bit of a space there, with this with blue light. Okay, so let's try this out. When we hover our red, when we hover red, <laughs> when we hover over round length, and when we hover rest length, okay? Boom. So we got this out of the way. Now let's style this button right here. So our class of BTN that we have for our button, let's select it and let's give it a height of 100 pixels. Let's also give it a width of 100 pixels. Now let's trim down the borders by giving it a border radius of 50%. 50%. What am I doing? There we go. Now we have a round button. Now let's change the background color. So background color to the variable of green. Let's also change the color of... I'm actually going to leave it this way. No, we need to change... We need to change the text color and also increase its font size. So color of the text within there is going to be the BG1 then the font size will be increased. So let's increase the font size to 1.4 RAM. And let's increase the font weight to 500. Okay. Now I also want to give it a bit of a box shadow and then a, a click effect. So let's do this within our button, box shadow. We have to give it the same box shadow as everything else has. So 0, 15 pixels, there's the input container, 10 pixels, and hash 333. Free, free. And I'm also going to give it a border of 2 pixels, solid, and hash 333. Free, free. Okay, so it just has a bit of a border there. Now when we're going to click this button, I want it to have a bit of an effect. So let's grab onto the class of BTN again. So BTN, and let's use the active selector. And when we click on a button, then we're going to, so when the button is active, we're going to transform it by scaling it with 0 0.5. So 95%, we're going to scale it down to 5%. So if I click on it, you're going to see that scale effect. Okay, now the last thing that we need to do is uh, we need to go to our JavaScript now, grab on to our timer and display it down here and then also style it. So this is pretty easy. We're just going to go to JavaScript. We're going to create here a function that's going to be automatically, automatically executed. Let's give it a const of my time, let's say my time. I'm going to set we're going to use the set interval, so set interval, and this interval is going to take in a function. It's going to call upon my timer, and we're going to repeat it each and every second. So we're going to say one thousand. Now for the function, let's create. This is the keyboard function. My timer. Open and close parentheses. Open and close. Curly brackets, I'm going to, going to create a const, which we're going to call today. And we're going to set this to a new date object. So new date. Now from this new date object, we're going to extract the, the local time string. And for this, we're going to create another const. So display time. We're going to set our display time variable to the today dot local date string and as you can see it returns a date as a string value appropriate appropriate to the host environment's current location so to mine and open close parent open close parenthesis because this is a method now all we need to do is display it somewhere so i'm going to go to the document get element by id and i said we have that id of display time display time and we're going to change its inner HTML to be equal to the display time. So display time. Hit save and there we go. Displays our time. Now all I want to do next is wait a second.
local string today. I use your local date. Oh, Jesus, local time, not date. Boom, there's a time. And because it's set in a one second interval, it's updating each and every second. And the set interval is a function that we're going to use a lot in this project. Okay, now let me also style this really quickly and then we're done with this part. Just see. So, display time. Let's scroll on to our ID, display time. And we're going to set the background color to variable BGC2. Now let's give it a border radius of five pixels. Let's increase its padding to one RAM. Let's also give it a box shadow. And this time I'm going to invert the box shadow. So I'm going to use inset. The box shadow is going to be towards the inside of, uh, of the box. <laughs> I'm going to use 0, 0, 15 pixels for the spread and 3 pixels only for the, the blur and hash free, free, free. Not EEE, -E -E, free, free, free. Hit save and there we go. Let's also change its color to that green color. So color and let's use green. Boom. Okay, so I think we're done with this part. Now let's make this do something. And also the icon tag, icon tag, icon tag. So I'm going to use a general settings for the FAS, which is, let me show you really quickly, the class of the icon tag. It has two classes. One is the type, it's the FAS, and the other one is what is going to be displayed. Now we're going to change this using JavaScript into a fist and then a chair, signifying fight and signifying rest. Okay, so let's go back to our CSS. We have our FAS selected. And I'm going to increase this font size to 10 viewport heights. I'm sorry, I wanted to say 20 RAM. And you can obviously see it's outside of our, our container here. So what I'm going to, to do, and also I wish to place the text over it, I'm going to position it absolute. And remember, we set our body to relative, so I can now position this absolute. And where do I want to position it? Where well, I want to position it from the top 10 viewport heights. I'm going to be pushed a bit further to the top. And now let's push it into the background. So I'm just going to use a Z index of minus one. It's, now it's in the background. And now I can change its color. I could have changed its color already, but I'm going to change this color now to my red color. And this didn't work because, boom, there we go. Okay, so we just changed, we just styled our heart there, boom. Next up, let's take care of our rounds and rest times. And for this, we're going to go back to HTML. And after we're done with our header, right after we need our header, we're going to create another container. And this container is going to be for the rounds and rest. So. I'm going to create here a general general div with the class of rounds dash container. And I'm also going to use our flex utility class here. Now, after we have this created, within this, we're going to have three rounds and two rests. Okay, so let's create five sections. So section, and it's going to have a class of group and also a class of flex. I'm going to multiply this three times and I should multiply it five times. And there we go, we have five containers, five sections. Now each of the section will have a either a round or a rest time. So I'm going to use the class of round and also type in here round. And after that, we're going to have a span tag. So let's create the class of round. Let's call it round one. And after that, we're going to have a span tag, which will have a class of round time, dash time, and also the ID of round one. So ID round dash one, and hit enter. 
Okay, now I need to repeat this for each round. So I'm going to copy it in the second one, which is going to be a rest time. So I'm just going to replace this with the class of rest. This also be rest. And this is also going to be rest. And I'm just going to tell it rest for the text. And now let's go in the third one. And this is going to be a round. So this is going to be two ID of two. And in the last one, also copy this in. And now we can also copy in our rest in the fourth one. Okay. Now I just need to replace the rest ID with underscore one and underscore two. So we have our round, our rest, our round, our rest, and our third round should be number three. What are we doing here? So we got this out of the way. Now all we need to do is <laughs> go back to our CSS and style it a bit. So each round, uh, let me think about it. We have it in a group. So let's grab onto the group. Let's give it a height of 100 viewport heights. Let's hit save. So each round, each rest, each everything was going to have a 100 viewport height. Now I don't want my groups to be displayed this way because you can see it, it takes off everything. Don't want this. So let's grab on to group again, to a group class. And let's display it as none. And boom, they're all gone. And well, they will be displayed. I also want to use here the justify content as space evenly. Okay, so I needed to take a quick break. Now let's go to our JavaScript file and let's draw out what we're what we're going to create, how and how we're going to create it here. So let's do our first to do. And this will be oh by the way, I have an extension installed. This is better comments. Just go to extensions. Search for better better comments and this one right here. Okay, and install it. You can use to do to create a to do. You can use a question mark to create a blue comment, a exclamation mark to create a red comment, so far and so on. I also have a video of on my most used extensions for Visual Studio Code. If you wish to check it out, I'm going to be a le leave a link in the description below. So first to do, get elements from the DOM. Now we're going to get going to get to do, 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 uh, get rounds and rests We're going to get alerts and we're going to grab this yeah this is basically it so let's get uh, two important things let's create a const and grab onto the body. So body is equal to document dot query selector. And I'm going to select our body tag. Then next we're going to grab onto that icon. So we only have one icon. So I'm just going to create a cons, call it icon. Oh, no, like how I'm positioned. It's called icon and I'm going to go to the document dot query selector and going to select our icon tag. Okay, we only have one icon tag. Now let's go to the rounds, get rounds and get rest. So let's start up with const. Let's say rounds, mm, actually round, round one is document dot get element by ID this time. You got to use get element by ID or query selector and going to select the round underscore one ID and then I'm going to create a cons for rest one to cons rest one and the same thing document dot get element by ID I'm going to select the rest one rest one and what am I doing here and you should be within quotations okay now I'm going to copy this let's say ooh just cut it out so let's copy this one two times going to delete the second rest this is going to be round three rest two round two boom there we go we should have everything selected 
now I need to go back to HTML. So let's go back to HTML and let's create our sounds. And for this, we're also going to create a folder and you can download everything that we have in here in the description below. Uh, also going to place those. Yeah, I know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to place those sound effects. So let's call this audio. And within this audio folder, I'm going to copy in my free audio files. So just drag and drop, boom, free audio files. Now I need to link them up in HTML. So for this, I'm going to go right and after our container. So before the before the script file, I'm going to type in here a comment of audio alerts. Alerts. Now this will be a audio tag. So you need to create a audio tag. And the source of the audio tag will not be in here, but it's going to be within the audio tag. So let's type in here source. Let's use a source tag. And the source tag will have a source. And the source will be, what am I doing? Yes, it's equal to within quotations, forward slash. Sorry about that. This should be here. So this is just a single tag, put it in here. And we're going to go up one level. We're going to go into our audio file. And from our audio file, we're going to select, well, this will be the alert 10 seconds. So it's going to be the wood clack. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I named my file and I'm sticking to it. Now, going back to the audio file, I'm also going to give this a ID of alert 10 sec. Okay, so this is going to be the alert 10 sec and I'm also going to place it in a loop. Now, we're going to copy this two more times and we're going to handle this using JavaScript later on. And let's say the second one will be alert stop and we're going to use here the stop round file and then we'll have alert start and we're going to use here the alert start file so start round bell okay we have our free audio files here now we can go back to javascript and select them so i'm going to create free const again so const number one is going to be for alert 10 sec. Let's go to the document dot get element by ID. You could also use query selector, always play around. I love to use get element by ID when I'm selecting IDs. It's just as simple. And let's select here the alert 10 sec. Okay, so let's hit save. I'm just going to copy this two more times. Boom, boom. This will be alert stop and then what am I, what didn't I select both of them? So control D start and this will be stop or go Did I type in go start, whatever, alert start, alert stop. Okay. Boom. Now next up, we're going to create the function that is going to initialize everything. And then function, this is create here const. This, this is going to be a arrow function. So let's call it start timer. I'm going to assign this to a arrow function. And this start timer, we're going to use. So instead of using document get element by the select the button, uh, add event listener at a click event, and when this click happens, a function will be initialize and so far and so on. I'm going to go back to our to, to, to our HTML and right within the button I'm going to say on click I'm going to assign it to Jesus that start timer function. My close parenthesis and there we go. And let's just test this by let's start clicking here on inspect and console log the string of start. Okay so Theoretically, when I go into round one has already been declared, where 17, round two, your round two, your rest two, and your round three. What am I doing here? Okay, so if I click on start, console log start, so this works, boom. Now, as you saw in the finished project, when we're going to start, we also have 
we're going to start. We also have this possibility to, I should have put this somewhere else to stop it. And I'm not going to do this here, but I'm going to do this in the condition. So this will only start. So let's do our condition. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to do here to do verification. Okay, so we're going to have a condition if the round, oh, I forgot to grab onto something, to the inputs. Woohoo! So get the random ID and up here, get inputs. Boom. Okay, so we also need to get our inputs. And this would be a const of round time input. So the time that we input in the round, round length. So we're going to go to the document dot get element by ID, and we're going to grab onto the round time. I'm actually going to close the left part here. Don't need it. So hit save. Uh, let's go here, inspect this, open and close. I know, I know. Just relax. Let's go back up here. Rounds time. I'm going to copy this two more times. Then I'm going to grab onto the round to the rest time. So rest, replace this, and the start stop button. So to uh, for this button, we still need this button because I'm going to change its style. So round time, and this will be start stop btn. And I'm going to grab onto the ID of start. Okay. So let's go back into our conditions. So we want when we, when we, we only going to start this if these two fields are not empty. So the condition is pretty simple. If the round time input dot value is equal to a empty string, or what am I doing? Or the rest time input dot value is triple equal to an empty string, then we're going to alert a string of input round and rest time. Okay, so if those two are empty, and we'll also return after this, so the function will stop. Now else, and this is where I'm going to start and stop our timer. So we cannot proceed only if these two have something in there. Okay, now let me just console log here. Start. Okay, so we still are empty, we cannot pass. If I only input one, we still need to input the second one and now start. Okay, so let's comment this out. And now I'm going to also give the user the possibility to stop the timer because when we start, a countdown timer will appear, as you can see here, which will give us 10 seconds and the round. Hello, just happened. Which one is the right one? Oh, <laughs> this is the right one. Okay, and I also want to give the user the possibility to stop. So let's go back to our, to our, <coughs> to our project. And let's say if the start is going to grab on to the start stop button and we're going to change this inner HTML to stop first of all. So instead of saying start, it's going to say stop. Let's use a capital T stop. Then we're going to I'm just going to grab onto this again. Uh, we're going to change its style dot background color to the hexadecimal color of uh, of the blue color of the blue no of the red color so it's going to be from here variables this color right here from the red color so hash you can also use here hexadecimal colors and we're also going to give it another type of function so start button I'm going to change this function now to on click and it's going to do something else. It's going to do click. It's going to execute another function. This function will be new workout. So it's basically what I wish to do here is to reset 
the, um, the entire thing. So let's create this new workout function. Let's go down here, let's say function. It's go also going to be a utility function. I'm going to use it more than once. So restart. Uh, still here, exclamation mark. And this is going to be to do restart, stop and restart the app. Okay. And this is an extremely simple function, just going to create a const. We said, we said it's going to have the, uh, the name of new workout. We're going to set it to a arrow function. And we're going to use the window dot location dot reload. And as simple as this is, let me show you if I click on start and also go for my validation, you can see it's now, uh, da, 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 da. it's now red, it says stop. And if I click on it again, it's going to reload the page. Okay, simple as that. So let's type in here comment of stop countdown. Mm, should be a to do. Stop the countdown. If we wish, then we're done with stopping the countdown. Now comes the interesting part. Now we need to set an alert that the countdown starts. So let's type in your comment to do alert 10 seconds. And we're going to do this by creating a set alert function. And this function, what are you doing? And this function is going to take in the a, a alert. And we have here different types of alert. And the first alert will be 10 seconds. So there we go. Now we need to create this function. So I'm going to go down here and say exclamation mark uh, interaction, alert. interaction alerts. Because this function is going to be used more than once. So let's create it first of all. Let's, we call that set alert. And this is going to take in a alert. And then we're going to take that alert and say, we're going to use the play operator on it. Okay. Now, after we play our sound, we also wish to stop our sound. So our sound will be conditioned by a set timeout. And after a specific time, so I'm going to set timeout uses a callback function. I'm going to use here error function. After this, a specific time, which I just said, I just used 1.3 seconds. After 1.3 seconds, the, the alert that is going to be passed in into this function will be paused. So we're going to use the pause operator and then it's going to be reset. So alert dot current time is equal to zero. So what does this mean? Well, let's just see what happens if I click on start and also type in something in here. Boom, there we go. As soon as I click on start, after everything is validated, after the button changes, the set alert function, which is this function is going to be called. And within this function, we just passed in this audio file or alert 10 seconds. Okay. This audio file was, let's go back here, here, was started by using the play operator. And then after 1.3 seconds, it stops, it pauses and it resets to zero. Okay. And we can use this to alert the horn and alert the bell. So basically I created one function and this function is going to be used more than one time. Okay. Now after we alert it, that we're going to start, I wish to create that countdown clock. So let's do this by first of all, grabbing on to a to this title 
where do we have it h1 title class okay so i'm going to grab onto the workout rounds timer and i'm going to replace it so let's say start countdown let's go to the document dot create selector i'm going to select the class of title not you class title which a second didn't i use crew selector up here for something body and icon okay those are tags okay so we grabbed onto the title now this replaced with a function that is going to start counting down now let's create that countdown function first of all so let's type in here a comment of start actually here uh to do start so to do start the round and start the count down should be one word come down and this would be the countdown function so let's say create count down function now this countdown function is just going to call get ready because it's act it actually prepares you to to start the round so let's say here function get ready the name is going to take in a element because we actually pass element actually passing in here a element that we're going to be replaced so first things first let's say let let's create the, let's create the functionality let's first of all convert our time we didn't pass in the time yet oh and uh, to, to, to do no let me do something so we need to grab onto the element that we created so element dot inner html i'm going to use here template literal so backticks and this is going to be placed with a div and so forth and so on so i'm just going to copy this in So it's going to be replaced with a div. I also need to close this div up. Not there, there, div. Which is going to have a class of get ready. And you can see it has the input container and flex class to it. Okay. And within here, now I need to type this in. For you to understand what I'm doing, I'm going to create an h2 with the ID of seconds and a class of active and animation seconds oh sorry animated animate seconds and within here we're going to pass in dollar sign the interpolation the seconds now what seconds will be passed in here well we need to create those seconds those seconds are actually passed in first of all by using a variable called let time and i'm going to create this let time where should i create it it's going to be reset its own i'm going to create it up here so before verification i'm going to create three um timestamps so let's create here to do time stamp and I'm going to create a let for the round time. This is going to be the round time input dot value. I'm going to be multiplied by 16. Just going to get instead of a string, because when we're inputting something in here, we're actually getting a string, not a number, but I'm multiplying it now with 60. So whatever is going to be passed in here, for example, if I pass in here one, that is one minute, but it's actually 60 seconds we want to convert it then to seconds but it's now a number if i multiply it with a number it's going to convert the string to a number okay so it's pretty much the idea here now let's change the let's copy that and change the round to rest and as i said the time the last variable that we need is let time and we're going to give this a string of 10. now we need to create this let time independent from the other functions. This is because this is going to be iterated and this, its value 
is going to be changed. And this is also why we're using let instead of const. So let's go back to our function, our function of get ready. And now I can say that let seconds, so the seconds that's going to be passed, sec the seconds that are going to be passed in here are actually the time. So the 10 seconds that I implemented up there and 60%. So it's going to be converted to, to numbers again. Okay, and down here, we're going to start subtracting from our time. So we have a function. Let's grab onto it. Let's go up here and let's use it. Get ready and we're going to grab onto that h1, pass it in here. So we're going to grab onto the element. It's awaiting an element and in that element is going to input this right here. Oh, it's going to input this right here and it's going to count down the time. So whatever time is, and in our case, time is 10 seconds. Now, I also want to see this having each and every second, that effect of each and every second. So we need to use a set interval function. So let's pack our set time into a set interval. And yes, use here error function. And the interval will be, well, 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. And within here, just going to pass in our set alert. So let's do this validation. Three minutes, three minutes. Let's click on start and hey, there we go. But this is not iterating and this is because set interval else alerts. Oh, I just use it in the, oh Jesus. Sorry about that. So set interval and start countdown and we're going to pass in the get ready what am i doing okay so free free start and 10 9 you see it starts counting down now you saw that i give this a active and a set and a animation animate a second so we actually need to create those two classes let's go to our css again and we have our active class. Oh, whoop. So dot active. And this class will, well, it's just going to, whatever is going to have this class, it's going to have a font size of 30 viewport heights, and it's going to be displayed as flex. Now, a couple of things that are still need to do is create the animation. So dot animation class animate, call it animate seconds. And this is going to use a at keyframe. And this keyframe is going to be called animate time, which is going to just go from a opacity of one and a transform of scale zero to a opacity of zero and a scale and a transform of scale of one. Okay, so let's try out this again. Oh, I actually need to include it in my class. So the class will Let's change its color first of all. It's going to be red. We will call it red, and let's call upon the animation using animation, and then its name animate time, and it's going to go one second and ease. Okay, so let's try this out again. We're going to pass something in here. Start the timer, and it's going to. I should have animated. Oh, sorry, it didn't save. Huh. So you can see it animates now. It's going to go from opacity of one to zero scale and opacity. It's going to go from opacity of one to opacity of zero. So it's going to disappear and scale from zero to one. So it's going to be blended in. Okay, so let's stop this. Next, let's go back to our JavaScript. We have a countdown and after this countdown, 
after error of countdown. After the countdown ends, we need to start the round. So let's comment here to do start first round. Now, everything that we're going to put in the round is going to have it. So the round can only start after a certain time. Well, we set our time to have a counter of 10 seconds. So we need to start the round after 10 seconds. And in order to do this, we're just going to create a set timeout function. So we're going to wait. So set timeout. And it's also going to use a callback function. And we're going to wait 10, 11, 11 seconds actually. So 11,000. Now, because it takes one second, it takes 10 seconds to count down and it takes an extra second to, to appear. So there's, there's a, this is a small breach there. So after 11 seconds, we're going to go to the document, query selector, we're going to select our header. So a header tag, and we're going to set style dot display dot none. Not dot, sorry. <laughs> we're going to set it to none. Okay, so after 10 seconds, after the countdown ends, as you saw here, free free. <coughs> sorry about that. After the countdown ends, the UI is going to be is going to change. Two, one, and boom. Okay, so we just changed the UI, and we achieve this by sending the the header. We're hiding the header. So let's say here to do hide header. Then we're going to alert to do alert. start round and so let's do this so we're going to do the set alert function and we're going to pass in the alert start simple as that now after we did this let me push this up here we're going to do we're going to start the rounds so let's type in here Alright, first round start. Actually, start the workout. Sorry about that. So this start should be here, and up here, going to to do start workout. And start the first round, and we're going to start the the first round, also packing it into a set interval. Now, this is a bit complex, but it's going to be really clear in just a couple of moment, moments. So let's create a set interval function. We're going to use the error function again, and this is going to repeat each and every second. Now, each and every second is going to check something. And that something is if the round one dot inner text inner text is not equal to the string of zero point not point zero zero then something should happen. So console log, let's say console log round one. Okay. Round one, round one is up here. Okay, we selected our round one, which is momentarily hidden. 
So let's see if this is true. Let's say three, three, start, six, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, I'm counting too fast. You get the idea, we're going to wait 10 seconds and the round starts. And we console, you can see round one is console logging. Now you can see this countdown each and every second. We started a countdown which is running until we stop it. So how can we stop it? Set countdown, I'm lost. Uh, here, so how can we stop it? Well, we're going to create another statement. Else if the round one dot inner text is equal so triple equal to zero, zero. Then we're going to start resting. So let's type in your comment, start rest. Now this is not the entire condition. You need to populate this with a couple of functions. So I'm going to hit refresh here. When we wish to start the round, we need to actually update the current state of the round. The current state of the round is, well, nothing. It has nothing in there. So we need to create a function which would constantly update each and every second something. And the something is the round. Now let's create down here, round, rounds and rest updates. And actually I'm going to use here a exclamation mark and create dates functions. Now, how does this look? It looks well, pretty much the same to this, but with a couple of ex exceptions. So let's call upon the function keyword, update round and we're going to pass in here a round. Now, when this round is going to is going to be passed in, then it's going to be grabbed onto it, and it's going to and we're going to change the inner HTML to a temporary literal, which is going to take in the minutes to dots and the seconds. And of course, we need to create them. So within here, we're going to first of all, create a const for the minutes. Those minutes are going to be wrapped in a math.floor. And within the math.floor, we're going to pass in the round time. Okay, so the round time that we created up here, round time, round time is the round time input dot value multiplied by 60. So we're going to get 60 seconds. If we input here a one minute, we're going to get 60 seconds. We're going to get a number. So the number is going to be passed in here and then divided by 60. Next up, we need our seconds. So let seconds, I'm going to assign this to the rounds time. So round time and again, 60. Now, because at a certain point, the seconds will, as you saw in our countdown, after 10 seconds, we got nine seconds and I don't want to display just nine, but zero nine. So we're going to reset our seconds by telling them that they're equal to if the seconds, and I'm going to use here a ternary operator. So we're going to say if the seconds are less than 10, question mark, then we're going to apply a string of zero plus the seconds. And uh, we're going to divide it by seconds. And there we go. Now all we need to do is start 
subtracting from the round time, using round time minus minus, and the uh, minutes, why aren't you use minutes me? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this should already work. Let's let's try this out. Free, free, start. You know what? I'm going to reduce this. Now oh, let's leave it as it is. Two, one, and I start counting. Why isn't this displayed? I didn't use the function. Sorry about that. So runs update. We need to pass it in here, and we're going to pass in the round one, of course. Sorry about that. We need to go through the emotions again to so 10, 9. And it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? So we're having the condition round one. Oh, we also need to display the round one. So we we are going to grab onto the round one dot parent element. And we're going to toggle the class list and we're going to add the class of active. So the round actually did work, but I didn't display it. So free, free, start 10 seconds again. And there we go, there's a round one. Okay, now we need to style this a bit. So I'm just going to refresh, go to CSS, and we're going to grab on to, 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 to do down here. We're going to start styling our rounds. So we said that if we have the class of active, then the class of round, and we're going to style both of them, the class of active and if the class of active has the class of then the class of rest going to set the font size to 10 viewport heights i'm going to grab onto the class of round time and the class of round in the class of rest time. Rest time, uh, we're going to change the background color. To the var of BG. To the variable color of BG2. We're going to change the border radius to 5 pixels. And we're going to set a box shadow of 0, 15 pixels, sorry, 15 pixels, 10 pixels, and hash of 333. And we're also going to have a transition, transition all 0.2 seconds and ease. Okay, so that's basically it for this part. Now, let me also include as soon as this uh, to, to, to do, that's not all that we want to do. So I'm going to comment out the round. That's not all that I want to do. In here, I'm also going to change the heart to a fist. So the first round starts. Then I'm going to grab onto the icon tag. So icon dot class list. I'm going to remove now the class of F A heartbeat. And going to add so icon dot class list add the class of F A dash fist. Now remember we're using font awesome, so it's going to automatically grab onto it. Rised. Okay. We're still not done. We also need to alert. alert 
10 sec. And for this, we're going to go into the round one dot inner text. And we're going to check if that inner text is equal to a string of zero and 10 seconds. Now, if this is true, I'm going to use a turning operator again. Then I'm going to set, the, I'm going to use the alert again, alert function set, set alert. Going to use the alert of 10 seconds. And also I'm going to change the round one dot style dot color to red. So I'm going to use the hexadecimal color of hash E two four three seven nine. Okay. And then all we need to do is to, 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 to set the close this up with the round one. Okay. So next up, we also need to check when the round has ended, we can set another alert. Alert. Stop round. And just alert stop. If it's a round or if it's a go, if it's a round stop or a round start, it doesn't matter, it just stops. So for this, we're going to check the round one. If the round one in a, if the round one's in a text is triple equal to the string of zero, zero, zero. So it's counted down completely. I'm going to use a turning operator again. What am I doing? Question mark. There we go. Then we're going to set another alert. So set alert. And this time we're going to use the alert stop. And then the round again, round one. Okay. So let's try this out. Let's say 0.3 seconds and this doesn't matter. Going to count down five, four, three, two, uh, stop. I'm not going to do that. And there's a round, it starts counting down. Let's see if it reaches 10 seconds. It should change the color to red and alert 10 seconds. And then when the round ends, it should have that horn sound. Woo! Excellent. Okay. So we're done with this part. Now I'm going to replace here something. For example, this right here, I'm going to use a function, which will do exactly the same thing. So let's type in here comment. Uh, let's say change icon. Now for the change icon, we're going to create another function. And I'm going to go in here. Let's say change. Actually, let's call it add remove because we're going to need a, a couple of, we're going to create multiple functions here for add remove. So let's say add remove add remove icon class. So this is actually the function I need to create. Create add remove function. So the function of add remove function is going to be as following. First of all, it's going to take in the current icon, so as parameter, and the next icon. So the current icon that is displayed and the next icon that we wish to be displayed. And for this, we're going to use, I'm going to copy, where are you? I'm going to cut this out from here. 
pass it into a function and instead of uh should have done this this way I'm going to do this so the current icon will be removed which is made like a made like a cow removed and the next icon will be edit so basically i need to cut this to out because i don't want to type it out again and we start it around here there's our icons and i need to use the function now okay so add remove icons it's going to go in here so add remove icons we wish to remove you need to pass this in as a string okay so we wish to remove the heart and pass in the fist boom and we can delete this now okay and this should also work now we're done with our round now let's start resting so we said that when we reach the round's inner text is zero then a rest should start so we should start resting but let's also check let's also pass in another condition and the rest one point inner h inner text should also not so exclamation mark not be equal to the string of zero zero now this condition is really important because if we don't pass this in then you're gonna get, to get an error <laughs> so first of all let's use our add remove icons function again ba -ba -ba -bum. we need to change our icons so we're going to go in the else if statement change icon we're going to change the fist icon this time and we're going to pass in a chair so i'm going to f a chair icon okay after changing our icons we now need to update our rest time and exactly as we did up here where we use where's a function update round we're going to update actually I should have passed in comment update round and down here we're going to have we could copy both of them and this is the very first thing that we do we update rest so we need to create this function and this is going to take in a rest one now let's go down here and create our rest our rest stretch rest, rest update round I'm going to copy this this is going to be rounds We're going to see why and it's going to be rest star and star so update rest it's going to take in a rest is going to take in the rest time so let me actually rest 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 and everything else will should stay the same so const going to pass in the rest time the rest time is going to be passing also for the seconds so far and so on and this should work so let's try it out rest time is here let's say point two and point two for the rest time let's start it and let's see what happens in five for the not going to do that again not going to do that two one ha. so we're going to have our first round 10 seconds then in four three two one round ends and yeah now we need to hide around and display our rest and we're going to do this actually before we update our rest it doesn't matter it just they're just milliseconds so it doesn't even matter but we need to create here a a display
Now we're going to toggle display. In the toggle display, we're going to add use another function which I'm going to create, add remove the active class because this active class is actually the class that is displaying the the rounds and the rest. And this is going to take in a round one and a rest one because we're going to toggle between hiding this display and displaying the next one, so displaying the next element. So let me copy this, go down here. We said we had more than one uh, add remove function. So this is going to be the next function, which is going to be function add remove. And this is going to add remove the previous activity and is going to add the current activity. Now I hope this makes sense because we're we actually because we're actually working around a, a lot of code by using this. So let's say previous activity whatever is going to be passed in here is going to select the parent element. So exactly as I did up there, it's going to take the class list and it's going to remove the class of activity or class of active. Sorry. <laughs> now it's the same thing for the current activity, select the parent element class dot add the class of active. So if I go up here, and we're passing updating something alert and toggling then this should be shown so point two point whatever so there's a round with point eight this is never going to be zero yep error ha huh. what am i doing Actually, stop. Just one. Point one. No, stop. Point one. Point one. Point one. It's going to be much quicker. So it's under ten seconds. I just want to skip the. Uh, just want to get from the round to the rest because everything else will be exactly the same. So ten second round. It didn't check the condition. Round ends and rest starts. Boom. That's basically it. Uh, okay, now let's take care of our rest. We're still not done with it. We still need to add color. So let me just check my notes. If the rest, so far and so on. So we removed the class, we update it, or we edit the classes, we updated them. I need to check for those two alerts. Oh yeah, I'm going to... I need to check for the 10 second mark. So this up here, but for this, I'm going to create another function. I'm going to create a, so alert 10 second and stop. So this two, I'm just going to copy in here. We're going to replace, so first of all, we're going to replace this with rest one. So the rest one is at the end. Then we're going to stop it. But we're not going to alert stop, but we're going to alert go so start. So alert start next round. So we're going to alert here start. Alert start. And instead of this 10 second long thingy, I'm going to create a check for 10 sec function. And this is going to take in this rest right here. So it's going to check if the rest, if instead of this, 
if rest one it has this condition. So let me just cut this out. I'm going to add it before our add remove. So here, uh, check, uh, just check for 10 seconds marker. Okay, so we're going to create that function of function check for 10 seconds is going to take in a activity. And this activity will be this right here. So wherever we have a rest or whatever we have in there is going to check it. Okay, this is always the same thing for each and every activity, whether it's a round or it's a, it is a rest, it is exactly the same thing. So this is why we're going to use this function instead of repeating ourselves. And actually, I'm going to now delete this up here. I'm just going to say check for 10 seconds. I'm going to pass in the round one. Okay, it's basically going to do the same thing. So this is getting much shorter, as you can see. Now, we're going to encounter a problem that we, we update it our let of round time and rest time, and they both are zero. So we need to actually update them back to reset them to, well, the, to their initial values. So how can we do that? Well, after the rest time ends, I actually need to update the next round. So we need to create a, right after this update round, we're going to create another function function of reset round time. Now the round time, I'm actually going to use, I'm going to use it right after, down here, reset round time. I'm going to use this function down here. Because when the next round should start, well, there's no more time because we, we counted down, we extracted from those 60 seconds or whatever we pass in there, we extracted everything and there's zero. Actually, that's why it stops. When, when it reaches zero, another function will, will be triggered. But down here, we're going to, when we're done with this, we're going, we, we, we set this condition. If the round, you know, inner text is zero and the rest is not zero, then rest will start and only then will rest start. But after we finish with our rest, we should reset our rounds to a to the to the to the set time, to the set minutes. So let me create the function. And this is actually a pretty simple function. We're just going to uh, do we have our rounds? update round, reset rounds, and we're just going to return the rest time, I'm sorry, the round time as a round time input dot value, and I'm going to multiply it with 60 again, okay? And the same thing we need to do to the rest time, because as you or we thought after we we're done with our rest, it's going to stay at zero. So we need to reset it. So reset rest time. Okay, and this is just going to take in the rest. It's basically the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to start and quickly copy and paste in the, the new conditions. So after we're done with this, Let's check it again. After we are, we had our rest, round two should start. Okay, so you are just going to type in here, comment, this is start rest one. This is a to do. 
Now we're going to create a else if condition and here we're going to start round two and we can only start round two if the rest one dot inner text we already guessed it in html text is uh, triple equal to zero and the round two dot inner text is also not equal to zero. Then we can start our second round. And we're going to repeat the same thing that we did up here. Instead that all right, let's just go through it. So we're going to add remove the rest one and add the round two as active. We're going to update update round. This is going to take in round two. For the icons, it's not going to be a chair, so it's just going to switch them. We're going to remove the chair and add the fist at the check for 10 seconds. We're going to check the round down here. We're going to alert the round to wait a second. This should be also two. And down here, we're going to reset, reset the rest time. Okay, we're done with round two. Now we need to rest again. So else if so else if the next condition we're going to have we need to check if the round two is so I'm just going to go up here, copy this condition. paste it in here. We're going to check if the round two inner text is equal to zero and the rest two inner text is not a hey, rest two. This is our second rest. Okay. So uh, let's type in here the comment of actually going to just copy what's in our first rest. This is going to be start rest two is going to remove round two is going to add rest one is going to update rest two is going to this is going to be the same is going to check the rest two for 10 seconds. It's going to check if the rest two is at the end and it's going to reset the round time once again and then else if again we're going to start our rest round. Woo! This pretty simple is going to just check if the round three dot inner text is not equal to the string of zero zero zero. Then we can start round three and should be capital R. I'm going to copy everything that we had in well, not any everything going to still delete a couple of things. So start round three. We're going to display rest two as hidden. We're going to display round three as active. Uh, we're going to update round three each and every second. We're going to change. We're going to leave this as it is. We're going to change the chair to a fist again. We're going to change if the round three has three seconds, uh, 10 seconds. <laughs> and then we're going to stop it at the end when it reaches zero and we don't need to reset anything. Don't need this anymore. Because it's at the end. Oh, I have here start. No, this should be stop. Sorry about that. Uh, this should be 
stop stop round so this should be stop and let me check because uh, start next round this is correct because this is a rest and this should be stop so stop round stop round this is a rest again it's going to start okay this is okay now we're not done we are not done yet because when we're at the bitter end <laughs> we need to uh, finish it and we're finishing it by creating a new workout so just typing here to do stop workout and create new workout so we're going to create another if statement <laughs> and we're going to check if the round free dot inner text is equal to the string of zero 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 then we're going to grab arm finally to our body. We didn't use our body for now. We didn't use our body. We didn't use our body, but we're going to grab onto our body and going to change its inner HTML. And we're going to use backticks again. So a template little. I'm just going to copy this in and go over it because this is a pretty long video, isn't it? So we're going to change our body. We're going to replace our inner HTML with an H1 with a class of title, a style. I didn't style this, huh? gone done and it's going to be wrapped and a button will be wrapped in the container with a class of input container so it's going to have this again and the button will have a class of btn and it's going to have the on click again we're going to use the function with new workout that we created down here okay so we're done let's try this out let's just do a half a minute yeah so point three point yeah point three and point three for the rest time hopefully no errors let's get started okay so we got our clack clack and let's see what happens so three two one first round come on boom round one there we go 70 seconds he's going to right hook left hook uppercut and 10 seconds, clack, clack. Only 10 seconds remaining. He's still hanging in there. Come on, you can do it. Three, two, one. And rest. Four, three, two, one, 10 second rest. Clack, perfect. And after this, there should be a bell for the next round. So round two, one. Boom, it's working. Come on, round two. He's on the ground. He's trying a Kimura. I'm a big fan of UFC, by the way. Okay, we had the 10 second clack. It's going, it's going. Three, two, one. End of round two, rest. Woo, this is so exciting. Woo. I already tried it out in my basement. 10 seconds. It's pretty cool. <laughs> It's nice when you're creating apps that uh, help you, you know? Okay, last round, come on, give everything. Actually, the finals are five minutes, five, five rounds, five minutes. 10 seconds, this is working. Can you imagine for, to, to fight for 25 minutes? Oh, Jesus. I so admire those UFC fighters and boom, we're done. And the done appears and click again and we got our start timer again. So, okay guys, hope you enjoyed it, this project. Ooh, this is one of my favorite projects until now, really. So hope you enjoyed it. If you did, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Leave a comment, leave any kind of suggestions, subscribe to the channel, share, share the video. Sharing means caring. If you wish to learn JavaScript, I got a uh, link to some JavaScript courses in the description below, actually to my course. 
also have a course with 30 projects down in the description below and take care see you next time bye bye Come <laughs> on.